being a big guy, I've noticed that people feel compelled to tell me certain things after shows. I get people that'll pull me aside and go, Gabriel, you're a very funny guy. You're very talented. Don't you think perhaps you're living a little excess in life? And I'm like, well, I love to eat. Well, don't you want to live to be a hundred? Well, not if I can't eat tacos. <laughs> and as many as I want. You know, a lot of people think that just because you work out and lift weights and you eat right and you do what people tell you to do, that you'll live a long life. Maybe you will, but you know, why do people measure life by the years instead of how good the years were? Well, measure by freaking, you know what I mean? What good is it to live to be 100, but you didn't do anything? You didn't go out and kick it with friends. You didn't go out and get drunk at some club and wake up in an alley one time, you know? What good is it? You stayed in the house and you were safe. And I lived to be a hundred. You know, uh, I don't know. That's why I, um, you know, I have a very big amount of respect for the crocodile hunter, rest in peace. But come on, you guys. Yeah, he died at 44 years old, but he died doing what he loves to do. Not a lot of people can say that. If I die tomorrow from overreading, <laughs> God bless me, that's exactly how it was supposed to be. You know how much adrenaline he had every single day, risking his life. You know how you feel when you're about to cross the street and a car goes, and your ass almost gets hit, and you're like, ah! oh, 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 oh. and then you're hysterical. Oh, oh my God, I almost, I almost died. Touch me, touch me right here, touch me right here, touch me. And the rest of the day, you appreciate life. You're like looking at the birds, you're at the sky. Oh, you're loving life. He did that every day. That's why every day I try to live just a little bit of my life. Like I might not be here tomorrow. Because you never know. I don't want to die tomorrow knowing I could have had a piece of cake tonight. <laughs> Shoot. That's why when people tell me, why don't you work out? Why don't you lift weights? Well, what if I'm going to die tomorrow? I don't want to die sore. I want to die full. When the coroner cuts me open, I want the whole room to smell like potato wedges. <laughs> and he's gonna go, this guy knew how to live right here, man. Good times, you know, but again, the crocodile hunter, I give him, I give him a lot of love, a lot of credit, but you know, people go, he, he's such a loss to the nature community, you know, he taught us so much about nature. And I got mad when I heard this lady on TV saying that he taught us a lot about nature, and it was like, no, he didn't really teach a lot about nature. If you want to learn about nature, you watch Discovery Channel or one of these, you know, nature programs where they have a guy on safari and he's studying from afar. Crocodile hunter, no, come on, every episode. Hey, what are you doing? Look over there, right there, it's a tiger. That tiger weighs 800 pounds and it can kill a man in 10 seconds. I'm gonna touch it. All right, tiger. Next episode, hey, that's a king cobra, the most venomous snake in all the planet. One boy, now I'm dead. I'm gonna pick it up. <laughs> He's angry! If he really wanted people to think he was out there, man, America, we should have borrowed him and sent him to Iraq. With no gun, just a camera crew. You imagine how bad that would have freaked out the enemy, you know? You're freaking a soldier working for Al-Qaeda and you're out there, you know? And he's walking towards them wearing shorts. And he's walking up to him. Hey, look over there. It's an Al-Qaeda member. An Iraqi soldier, one of the most dangerous creatures in all the planet. One push of a button and I'm gone. I'm gonna poke him with a stick. 